The world of football is in crisis. Behind the glitz and glamour of the biggest sport on the planet, there's a dirty little secret that's threatening to tear it all down. Doping. For years, players have been using performance enhancing drugs to gain an unfair advantage on the pitch, but as the evidence mounts, it's becoming clear that the problem is much more widespread than anyone could have imagined. The first whispers of doping in football emerged in the 1970s, when a handful of players were caught using anabolic steroids. At the time, it was seen as a fringe issue, something that only a few rogue players were engaging in. But as the years went on, the problem seemed to only get worse. In the 1990s, the use of erythropoietine slash EPO began to plague the sport. EPO is a hormone that stimulates the production of red blood cells, which can improve endurance and performance. It was initially developed to treat anemia, but it quickly became a popular choice for athletes looking to gain a competitive edge. The problem with EPO is that it's almost impossible to detect. It's a naturally occurring hormone, so traditional drug tests can't distinguish between normal levels and levels that have been artificially boosted. This made it a favourite among dopers who knew they could use it without fear of getting caught. As the years went on, the use of EPO and other performance enhancing drugs became more and more common in football. Players at all levels, from amateur to professional, were using these drugs to gain an advantage. The consequences were often severe, as many players suffered from serious health problems as a result of their drug use. In the early 2000s, a series of high-profile doping cases rocked the football world. Some of the most famous players in the sport were caught using banned substances and the fallout was devastating. Sponsors pulled out, careers were ruined, and the sport's reputation was left in tatters. Despite these setbacks, the problem of doping in football persists to this day. As new and more sophisticated drugs hit the market, it becomes harder and harder to catch the dopers. And with the stakes higher than ever, more and more players are willing to take the risk. So what can be done to combat this insidious problem? Some have suggested stricter drug testing with more frequent and advanced testing methods. Others believe that education is key, teaching players about the dangers of performance enhancing drugs and the importance of clean sport. But no matter what approach is taken, one thing is clear. Doping in football is a problem that won't be going away anytime soon. It's a dark and shadowy world where the line between fair play and cheating is constantly blurred, and until we find a way to stamp out this problem once and for all, the sport will always be overshadowed by the spectre of doping. As the use of performance enhancing drugs continues to plague the sport of football, many are wondering what the future holds. Will the problem continue to grow or will we finally see a crackdown on doping? One thing is certain, the fight against doping in football is far from over. Despite the efforts of organisations like FIFA and WADA, the use of banned substances remains a persistent problem. And as long as there are players willing to take the risk, the temptation to dope will always be there. But there is hope. With advances in testing technology and a renewed commitment to clean sport, we may one day see a football world free of the shadow of doping. 